What's going on guys and finally it is going to be time for an underdog tactic, the ultimate underdog tactic. It took me quite a long time to make because I wasn't happy with the first one I made to be honest with you. But if you guys are new to the channel be sure to subscribe and definitely if you are already here be sure to leave a like on the videos because it's constant tactics. We've got other exciting stuff coming up as well. But let's get into the test and phase of course it is going to be four underdog teams. The first one they find themselves in the Vanarama National League that is going to be Aldershot, a team predicted to finish in 19th place. Predicted and what we do are two different things as it is going to be 46 games played We win 37 draw 7 and only lose two games which come against York and also Ebbsfleet in a 4-3 defeat A bit of a dramatic game on that occasion in terms of goal scorers It's going to be Laurent coming in with 28 goals Christian picking up a 7.38 highest rating on average and also Ollie Harfield picking up the most assists coming in at 15 for the season In terms of the league stats is very very good though 120 goals are going to come in and just 28 conceded so scoring quite a good amount of goals considering the standard of the team we are but defensively we're an absolute brick wall we love to see that in terms of the other trophies we didn't do the best of the best am i bothered not at all because we took a team predicted to finish almost in the relegation zone and turned them into champions. Now, going over to the league stats, we are going to feature in just a few of them. Actually, almost all of them. That is going to be seven. Most points per game at 2.57. Most goals at 120. The most shots for at a staggering 751. The fewest shots against at 362. The most dribbles made at 777. Fewest conceded at 28. And also the most clean sheets covered in at 26. It's an absolute banger of a season. Now, going over to the data hub, we are going to be looking at 2.61 goals per game. A conceded at 0.61, so that is bang on. Two goals more to what we are going to be conceding. Just over 16 shots a game, alongside of a 73.44 tackle win ratio and a pass completion of 88 0.36. What a season. Next up, and it is going to be the real standout team in the video. That is going to be over in Skybet League 2. And I've got to show you the full league table here just so we can go over the results a little bit easier. But it's going to be with Grimsby, a team predicted to finish in 11th place. We actually went invincible in this season as well. Obviously playing 46, winning 38, and drawing 8 of the games. But as you can see, a lot of the games were literally 1-1s, you know, very low scoring games. And I will admit a lot of this save was simulated. So I didn't even use my other variants which I've got um, in this save. I did with the other ones, but with Grimsby, I think I should have went more attacking, and potentially we could have probably got at least 42 wins here, but still very impressive failing to lose a game, which is very rarely done in FM with a team like Grimsby, so we love to see that, and going over to them stats as well, we are going to feature in a fair few of them. It is going to be the most points per game, the most shots at 837, the fewest shots against at 312, the most dribbles made nearly at 1,000, 928 though, to be exact Exactly the fewest conceded and the most clean sheets. Peter Hub wise is going to look absolutely perfection. 2.63 goals per game. With this sort of tactic and the level of team we're playing with, we're not going to be scoring three or four goals a game. We simply have not got the facilities for it, but we are going to be very defensively solid, conceding half a goal a game. Is that even a sentence? But 0.5 goals per game, over 18 shots on this occasion, an 89% pass completion in this save, and a tackle win ratio of 78%, which is roughly 5% more than the previous team so a little bit of discipline now definitely over to the most challenging one that is going to be nottingham forest i think they're predicted to finish 15th place we got fifth place which i'm going to take to be honest with you obviously two points off manchester united who unfortunately maintained that last champions league slot but to be getting any form of european football with this nottingham forest team is an absolute miracle to put it bluntly it's going to be big devot coming in with 19 goals it's going to be Tavares picking up a 7.16 highest rating and starman delilo picking up the most assists coming in with 13 now, in terms of the actual league stats, we're not going to be too dominant, to be honest. I mean, we are literally Nottingham Forest, and there are a lot better teams in this league without even going through the top six. Now... 65 goals scored, 37 conceded. It's not going to look the most appealing in terms of the stats, but I'm obviously my main goal with this was to finish in the top 10. So to finish in the top five, obviously Needham are going to get Europa League. That literally is all I'm interested in. Forget the stats for the season because we got what we needed to do. We tipped it off. That's all that we care about. And also got to the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. So in my eyes, it's a very good season. Team stats, we're not going to feature in a lot of them, but a real key one I'm going to show you is this stat here. Out of all the teams in the league, we still rank one 753 now this shows us the most dribbles being made we are not afraid to take on a man we are not afraid to take on a defender and really get stuck in complete 
dribbles, get in their face. So I'm buzzing. We can take this stat line home because there's a lot of, there's a lot of teams that probably should have got above us in this one. And the real standout, to be honest, I know I keep saying that, but this is the real, real one. A 0.97 conceded. So way under a goal a game, which is really impressive of a team like this in the hardest league in the world. 1.71 goals per game scored as well. An 89% pass completion. Buzzing would maintain that in this league as well. A 74.33 tackle win ratio and just over 12 shots a game or actually edging towards 13 and lastly it's going to be 21st place predicted Sheffield Wednesday in the Skybet Championship where we didn't get automatic promotion but we got through to the playoffs and won the playoffs which says a lot about how good this tactic actually is to deal with the extra games at the end of the season and to play in big games especially against a team like Norwich who are a very good team in the championship now it's going to be Josh Windass coming in with 27 goals it's going to be Barry Bannon with a 7.15 average rating alongside a 13 most assists in all competitions, which is quite high. I will say, as to be expected with an underdog tactic, you're not going to be scoring... 150 plus goals in a season as we didn't hear either 85 goals scored 50 conceded again underdog tactics you're not going to see incredible stat lines you are you purely want an attack that can get results and that's exactly what we've done in this league so in my eyes it's faultless the cups again to be fair another semi-final which is very good for a team like this where unfortunately everton did do us over but four teams tested with guys four very very bad teams in their leagues to be honest and the results i think are talking for themselves and let me know in the comments what you think but in my opinion this is the definition of an underdog tactic but also the other side to an underdog tactic is to see how it performs against some of the bigger teams and obviously we didn't win every single game but as a couple of point out games we've got a couple of real big games here a tuna win against liverpool with this nottingham forest team and to be honest with you the quality of play was actually very good maybe becker could have done better there on obviously preventing that goal going in but it wasn't a sort of snatch and grab we played quite well throughout the entire game gives right back into Dominguez into the middle and that's a really well crafted goal no they're not a top five team but West Ham obviously quite a bit better at FM on this game but a very comfortable five in the win at home for us in the Premier League against a full strength West Ham team great link up play for the middle out onto the right into Origi who by the way had a very good season as we saw in the stats and I feel like he's just honestly I've got a batch of players I'm going to quickly talk about these batch of players Ross Barkley is the main man I've got a small pool of players where where I feel like they get disrespected in real life. But in the game, they seem to be incredible. Divock Origi and Ross Barkley are my two favourites. I've got to get it out there right now. Let me know in the comments if you've got any players who are sort of lower rated, but obviously do perform really well, because I don't care what anyone says. We've always got that one player. As Serge Aurier just brings back a prime Tottenham day... Did he have a prime at Tottenham? I'm not even sure, to be honest, but a good goal anyway, as I keep waffling on down the right-hand side, a ball in the box into a Rigi Fabianski. Think he was getting ice cream. It's a free goal. Now, over to your favourite part of the video, and if you haven't already, please do leave a like on the video, and if you are new, be sure to subscribe to the channel, because it helps the channel out massively, and we're trying to push for 20k some point next year, so it helps out massively, and if you do enjoy live streams, you can find me here as well, so come and say hello, you won't regret it. But this tactic here is going to be set up around, obviously, a five back it is actually going to be what a five four one or a five two two one if you want to say it like that probably a five two two one um now don't let the back five put put you off being like a solid block because the complete wing back's actually more position like here in terms of the actual gameplay but we are going to get things off of the player roles and that is going to be going with a sweeper keeper who is going to simply be on defend obviously with an underdog tactic i don't want to keep her coming out taking more risks being too risky because you know, a lot of the time you're playing with underdog teams, your players haven't got the best quality. So I've also factored that in, especially in the goalkeeper area. Next up is going to be the complete wing back on the right hand side. He's going to be on support, on take more risks, cross more often, and run wide with the ball. They play a crucial role in providing width for this team because obviously the inside forwards do drift in naturally. So the complete wing back is going to go forward and get involved and obviously create a fantastic option on either side of the field. To complete the back three, obviously the back three centre backs is going to be a ball playing defender on the right, simply on the default. A ball playing defender on cover in the middle, so one of them is going to be a little bit deeper compared to the other two. And on the left hand side, another ball playing defender simply on the default. When it comes to the left back, it's going to be exactly the same as the right hand side. So a complete wing back on support, on take more risks, cross more often, and also run wide with the ball. And obviously, by the default instructions, you're also going to get them running further forwards, roaming about as well. So that's they are going to be a real crucial part of this team. In the middle, it's going to be Volante on support coming in, on get further forwards, and also tackle harder. And next to him, a deep line playmaker is going to come in simply on the default instruction. So it's a really good balanced midfield because... 
Both players will defend. Obviously, the Volante is going to be more attacking to support this front three. But the deep line playmaker is going to sit in, obviously, pluck out longer passes, which we're not afraid to do in a sort of lower league tactic anyway. And they just complement each other really, really well. On the right-hand side, the first attacker of the video is going to be an inside forward on attack on Mark Titer. And exactly the same... It will not let me click on it. That is very interesting. Um, on the left-hand side, it's going to be exactly the same. Literally, inside forward, on attack, on Mark Titer. Don't know why I can't click there. Very interesting. And to finish it off, the advanced forward, on attack, on shoot more often. And that is going to complete your player roles. Now let's go over to the team instructions. So this is all going to be based off a custom Gagan Press style on the positive mentality. And let's get into it right now. The first thing is going to be fairly narrow. This is going to make the team a lot more compressed and sort of be more of a compact unit, defend better. And obviously just, we're not going to, we don't want to go too wide and then have loads of space in the middle of the field because there is quite a big gap in this area here, as you can see. So bringing them in a little bit more narrower just closes that gap and makes the team a lot more easier to play with. In terms of the approach play, it's going to be passed into space. We're going to overlap left, we're going to overlap right, and of course, we're going to play out from the back because we have got three ball-playing defenders. We've got to make use of it, and talking about making use of it, if you don't want to make use of these tactics, even better, you can join the Patreon today. We've got over eight perks for you guys at the moment, including access to all three of these tactics. You get early video, early tactic release, you get one-on-one -on -one tactical help, you get priority in your requests, giveaways, and so much more. Honestly, it's really worth getting involved, and I want to thank all of the names coming down the screen right now, because these are going to be the 1,000 plus people that have joined the Patreon. I can't actually get everyone on the screen right now, so I do appreciate the love, guys because it's absolutely nuts but yeah you've got to come and join the gang because people are loving it but let's carry on with the in possession as we are going to go with a shorter passing directness and a higher tempo now yes i know what people are probably thinking josh it's an underdog tactic you can't play with a higher tempo lies you can play with a higher tempo as long as you've got training your rotating players your resting players you can play with a higher tempo now what i will say is you have obviously got to take into account that you've got to change this during the game so if you go into a game against a slightly smaller team um that being you're also an underdog so say i'm not in forest i play burnley so i go in and i go two nil up it's down to you to lower that tempo because you don't need to play with a higher tempo for that entire game so it's down to you to make those little individual tweaks weeks but you can play with that higher tempo we're going to run up defense as well as the last instruction alongside of mixed crosses because we are going to be based basically a counter-attacking team in transition we're going to keep it nice and simple it's going to be the counter-attacking style distribute to the center backs and take short goal kicks again common sense but if your goalkeeper hasn't got great kicking if you want to eliminate eliminate any potential risks i would have roll it out um for me my keepers were okay so i just kept it as short goal kicks but again if you want zero errors i I've never really seen a throwing error on this FM. Go with roll it out if you want to eliminate any potential errors. Last of the team instructions for the default tactic, we are going to go with the mid-block line of engagement, the standard line. We're going to get stuck in. Again, if you're picking up too many bookends, you can take this off. This will impact the tactic a little bit in terms of the aggressive nature of the tactic, as in putting in a challenge, getting stuck in, as it literally says. But if you are getting too many bookends, that's pretty much your only option to get rid of them. And we are going to go with much more often and, of course, prevent short goalkeeper distribution that's going to give you the default tactic we've got two more tactics to go over now one's going to be more of a long ball based one and then a bit more of an attacking version so do stick around let's get right into it even with sheffield wednesday guys in the cups we were playing premier league teams obviously and we were beating teams like brentford with this team predicted to basically get relegated from obviously their current division and yes they did get a goal it was 1-1 for a period of time but we got over the line you've got to see their goal coming in now actually it's a great goal from damsgaard but we don't sit back we don't you know we don't think do you know what this game's done we're gonna lose we fight back we get stuck in great pass and play actually burns the right back and it's a fantastic ball in and of course the big one with sheffield wednesday would have been or is going to be the playoff final against Norwich a 3-1 win which is lovely to see we got off to a very good start actually a goal before half time it is going to be Starman Windass picking up the goal and we just sort of got onto a little bit of a a bit of an attack and flow to be honest this game Windass a great ball through sent Gunn the absolute I mean Gunn com completely got that position and wrong as it is going to be a bit of a tap in there in the end from Masaba a Bit of a bad ball there from Asaba, recovers it again, and I think at this point Gunn's already had one error, may as well make it two. How much space is he going to leave at the near post? As we do get a goal here, very late on into the game, and it was too late for me to worry as our goalkeeper 
didn't have hands. So now up to the next variant. That is going to be a long ball tactic. Now I've included this in the video. Obviously, Patreons, you can get this by simply downloading all free. But this one is designed for people that are adamant you can't play a lower, um, a higher tempo. Sorry, this one is going to be based off a lower tempo, um, or sort of a medium tempo, should I say? But it is going to be more direct based. So we're going to go over it, explain its pros, explain the cons of it as well compared to the default variant. But let's go over and talk about the player role. So the goalkeeper is going to remain the same alongside of an entire unchanged back three in terms of the centre backs. The left back is still going to be a complete wing back on support with tackle harder. So we are going to have less custom instructions on this one. Exactly the same on the right hand side as well. So naturally, just talking about the back five, it's a much more of a defensive back five compared to obviously the balance variant, the normal variant we tested with on um, most of the games anyway. But it has still got a little bit of a fighting element. So for example, the complete wing backs naturally have get further forwards on them anyway. So they are still going to be quite attacking. We're not going to be, you know, defender for 90 minutes of the game, but this is definitely more of a less aggressive wing back system. In the middle, it's going to be a DM on support, on hold position, tackle harder, and also mark tighter. And next to him, I was tinkering with the idea of going with two DMs to really lock off this sort of team. But I was like, long ball tactic, what suits long ball? Deep line playmaker. They can ping a ball out. And that's what I went with on support and also tackle harder. Both of the inside forwards are going to be on support now, simply both on Mark Titus. So very similar to the balance variant, but obviously not attacking a little bit deeper on the supportive duty. And to finish it off, the advanced forward comes in on shoot more often. Let's go over to the team instructions. So it's still going to be a Gagan press tactical style on the balanced the balance mentality on this occasion. Now, some of the pros of this tactic are going to be it's a lower tempo, not as aggressive and hard for the players to play in, but you're not going to have as, as much possession because we are trying to obviously go along with the ball. We're trying to not rush things, but obviously playing direct has its ups, has its downs, you know, as everything does in life. You have not as much of the ball. Sometimes you're going to get the ball forwards and you might not get anything from it. Sometimes you're going to get the ball forward so quickly you catch the opposition off guard and it's an easy goal. So it's two very different ways of playing football and obviously I'll download both of them and just see which one works better with your team. That's what I'm going to say. It's going to be fairly narrow still though. We're going to pass the ball into the space. We're going to play out from the back. We're going to go slightly more direct with the passing. Obviously we're going to lower the tempo down to standard, the default option. We are going to time waste. Now this is game dependent. So if you're in the lead, definitely have this on. If it's nil nil, be a bit stupid to have it on in my opinion. And we are going to play for set pieces. So make sure you get the ones from obviously Nap or watch my video on FM Scout or get whoever from your favorite YouTuber. Make sure you've got some very good set pieces because they are very powerful in this game. Let's go over to the in transition tab. Transition, nice and simple. We're not going to counter press, but we are going to counter attack. You can see here by this wonderful diagram, it's going to be both of the wing backs getting stuck in, the wingers and also the striker. Meaning if we are going to get countered on our counter, we're going to be completely fine because We've got three centre backs and also two midfield options. So we're not going to be vulnerable from a counter to our counter. A lot of counters being said. We're going to distribute to the centre backs while taking short goal kicks. Same principle does apply. If your goalkeeper has got poor kicking, you can simply roll the ball out. Our possession, we're going to go with that standard line, the high pressing line of engagement more often, not much more often, prevent short goalkeeper distribution and also get stuck in. And the last variant of the video is going to be an attack and variant, one to take into a game to switch to if you need a goal for whether you're drawing or you go 1-0 down, you want to get a point back into the game. You can switch to this from any of the previous variants to go out and chase a game. Now, the big changes are going to be done in that midfield, but we're going to go over the whole tactic, but I'm not going to waste your time. The goalkeeper and the centre backs remain untouched. The complete wing backs are both going to be exactly the same. They're now going to be complete wing backs on attack, on take more risks, cross more often, and also run wide with the ball. The midfield gets the real big change, to be honest with you, as we are going to have two more attack and minded midfield players compared to a DM and a deep line playmaker. A Volante on support, on take more risks, and also tackle harder. This role is introduced to the team because obviously the take more risks option especially is going to be good to get the ball moving forward. And obviously, if you are chasing a game, you need to be willing to take risks when you're chasing it, essentially. The Volante next to him is going to be on attack, on dribble more, and also tackle harder. The inside forward on the left is going to be on shoot more often and mark tighter. But if your right winger has got better shooting, have the shoot more often on the right hand side. It's very team dependent and player dependent on what you have in your team. On the right hand side is going to be an inside forward on attack, on road from position and also marked tighter. And to finish it off, it is going to be a little misclick there, the advanced forward on attack, 
on shoot more often. And going over to the team instructions, it's going to be an attacking mentality on the Gagan Press style. Still, it is going to be fairly narrow, so that remains unchanged. We're going to pass into space as always. We're going to overlap left and overlap right because we really are trying to go for, you know, take the game to them now. We're going to play out from the back because we've got three ball playing defenders. Literally should always be doing that if you've got that many in the team. We're going to go for shorter passing directness, match with a higher tempo, so very aggressive, very in the face. Mixed crosses remains unchanged. The big change is going to be to be more expressive alongside of the run at defense. Transition, we're going to counter press, we're going to counter, we're going to distribute the ball quickly because again, this is to be switched to for if you're a goal down, so there is going to be a lot of urgency going in with this tactic, and we're simply going to take short goal kicks to the center backs. And lastly, out of possession, it's going to be the standard line, the high press line of engagement, much more often prevent short goalkeeper distribution and also get stuck in. Now, if you're in the sort of last five minutes of the game and you're like, do you know what? I need to get a goal. I don't care about the risks. Obviously, you can whack the line up to higher, if not much higher. But for me, I wouldn't full send it as soon as you just need one goal because a lot of people, they can see the goal in like the first half and they just full send, go all out attack inside of 50 minutes. You don't need to do that. This is a very, it's a very attacking tactic, but you are still going to be able to defend. So don't full send it with a much higher line until sort of the last five to 10 minutes. But that is going to give you guys three fantastic best underdog tactic that I've made personally so far this year. Very fun to play with some weaker teams, by the way. If you guys have got any more ideas, whether that be a manager replication or you want to see a certain formation, a certain style, be sure to comment below. If you have enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like, drop a little subscription. I'll see you boys in the Twitch, hopefully, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you guys did enjoy today's video, here are going to be a couple more videos I'm sure you're going to love. Down here, you're going to see my previous video, and here is going to be a video I personally recommend for you guys to check out. Trust me, you're going to love it.